Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Jacob Strupek. Welcome back to the Bowtie Movie Lounge. Joining me today, David Dickerson, a good friend of mine. Yes, sir. Yeah. How, how are you feeling? How do you feel? Do you feel welcomed at the at the lounge? Yeah, it feel, feels good to be here. Uh, feels good. It's been a goal of mine. You know, once this blows up, I'll be famous. <laughs> so I'm ready for that. <laughs> well, I mean, hey, look, you're here. I'm here to, I mean, I guess we're not famous just yet, you know. Just but give it a year, decade, maybe. Yeah, it's, it's going to age like wine, you know. It's, it's, yeah. it's going to. It's going to age the same way I think this movie has. I mean, what do you think? Great movie. Great movie. It's one of my favorites. Uh, I mean, there's you, there's a lot to say about this movie. I mean, a lot to say. Well, we're gonna say a lot about this movie, <laughs> but I mean, I'm sure the the listeners or viewers, I'm sure they've they know what they're listening to. But why don't you remind them this classic film, Prisoners, coming up. So sit back and relax. You're at the Bowtie Movie Lounge. All right, Prisoners. Yep. What a movie. You know, it was one of those movies that kept me on the edge of my seat. You know, yeah. I was grabbing the table. You know, I had the, I had the Celsius in hand. Yeah, oh. Grabbing the Celsius. Really? I mean, I, I was, that probably could have been cardiac. I mean, you're a young guy, but that could have been cardiac arrest. Just this movie is so tense. Yeah, because I didn't know what was going on. If it was cardiac arrest or, like, just a crazy movie. Yeah, just the those emotions just channeling you know yeah but like also that's what's cool you don't sometimes you don't feel emotions which is cool about this and i think denis villeneuve yeah you just you don't feel emotions which is added to the effect of the movie yeah do you feel that way yeah you know at some points he made this movie very well and he makes you feel a certain way the entire time Mm -hmm. sometimes you know he brings you up and down at some points it's almost neutral like you know i don't really know what i'm I'm going to expect next. You never know what's coming around the corner with this one. Um, Oh, without a doubt. Prisoners, uh, released September 20th of 2013. I don't know what I was doing in that year. The film stars Hugh Jackman, Jake Gyllenhaal, Paul Dano, Melissa Leo, Terrence Howard, Viola Davis, Mm -hmm. and Maria Bello. And then I forgot his name. Um, uh, Yeah. Dylan Minnette should have added him to that list from 13 Reasons Why. Oh, yeah. With a $46 million budget and making a worldwide gross of $122 million up to date. This movie has become a pinnacle of kidnapping thrillers. Spoiler alerts to anyone who's not seen this movie... Uh, do you think they should watch it? Oh, yeah, 100%. It's one of my, one of my all-time favorites. You know, if you're, if you're ready... If you're feeling it and you want to watch a good thriller, this is it. It's on Netflix too. That's right. It is on, it Netflix. Is on Netflix. They just put it on Netflix. I don't know how long it'll be on Netflix, so yeah, better watch it. You just you just as never soon know. As possible. You just know. Thank thank God I own it, so I can you know I guess just pirate it to everybody. Yeah, and if you haven't watched me it up. right now, pause this video, go watch it, and come back. Yeah, please. Yeah, if you don't mind, because there this movie really does work spoil free. I mean, there are some movies you can get around, you know. No, yeah, yeah. But, but not this, this movie. Not you this. cannot go in it without the spoilers. It just, I don't know, the way it works on your emotions and just the suspense, if you have not. Because, I mean, I rewatched it to get ready for this podcast. <laughs> Believe it or not, I watched it twice this past week. Yeah. First with my mom, which was fun. Um... My viewers and listeners will probably learn something new about me today. I don't know if they know that I'm one of eight kids. Yeah. So it's kind of fun to watch my mom watch this. Like, how, you know, I know oh, she yeah, has no. kids. The anxiety. Yeah. It's, I don't know. She, it's not like she didn't give a reaction that I was, I guess, kind of hoping for. You know, I wasn't trying to give her trauma or anything. You know, because this movie does a good job with balancing. I feel like it feels raw. Yeah, yeah. It sparks the thoughts of where would I be in yeah. this, and and that actually brings me to uh, an opening question. But first, what are your personal thoughts on this movie? Well, I thought this movie was was a masterpiece. I thought it was an amazing. So movie. we're putting it in master class. Okay, I, I I liked it that much. I liked it so. I like it. Uh, I like it. Yeah, it's uh, it's a it's a it's a ride. 
you know, you sit you sit down, you watch this movie. It's a it's a real thrill. Uh, you know what's good so good so what's so good about this movie is that it's broken down into sections and revealed mm-hmm. to you as you go on. So like at the beginning, you learn something. Yeah. From you know, and then you learn something before like that happened before this happened. Right. It's going back and forth, and it pieces together at the very end. It's perfect ending. I think it was a perfect ending. So you think it was a perfect ending? Yeah. Uh. I'm I'm excited to talk about it. Right. Um, I will say, it is a phenomenal movie. Yeah, I love this movie. Although there are some parts where I'm like, eh, yeah, a little far fetched to me, which is what I'm excited to talk about. Yeah, you know, there are some moments uh, for spoiler, I guess, for what we're gonna talk about, like the snakes and. Oh yeah, that was. Uh, it was just some of it was was a little stretchy, I guess. Yeah, if you will. Um, but no, I mean, like I said, a phenomenal movie. I love it. You know, there's going to be some uh, discussion, which I'm, I'm, I'm excited for. I'm excited for. Opening question. What's your dad, if you had kids, like neither of us do, uh, you know, I'm hoping you don't have kids. I do not uh, have kids. Okay. So <laughs> just, you know, just putting that out for the viewers. Yeah. Um, if you had kids and one was abducted or two. However many you want. Not that you want anyone, any of your kids abducted, of course. But if you had a kid, if you had, okay, if you had kids abducted, which dad would you be more like? Which one would you resemble? Oh. Keller or Franklin? Or you know, even, even if, would you even be more, take more of a Detective Loki approach? You know, if you're in that situation, I mean, you can say whatever you want right now, but I mean, it's really hard to keep a cool head in that yeah, kind of situation. Exactly. So I don't think I'd be a, a detective. I would be a detective Loki if it wasn't my kids. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. But uh, I think if it was my kids, you know, I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but I feel like I'd be more like Keller trying to yeah. bring things in his own hands. Yeah. Trying to get it done himself. You know, yeah. I, I feel like I'm more of like a, like I'm more of like a, like a, like a fight or flight person. I'm more of mm-hmm. like a fight person. So I feel like I'd be more like Keller in that sense. Yeah. You know, even though Franklin... He did take it well. He did. I don't know. I just felt like he took it a little too well. More yeah. like he let he let his emotions get to him a little more than I feel like I would have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, like I probably would have lost, just lost it. So yeah, no, my reply to, to this question would be, I, I like to think of myself as I would go to the depths of maybe abducting a guy with special needs and just locking him up in a crate until he talked. I like to think I would go to that length for my kids or my yeah. s- even like a wife. Yeah, any yeah, any yeah. loved one. I like to think I would go there. Yeah. So I you know I guess we're on the same track as we would both be Kellers. You know. <laughs> um yeah. what would uh what would you do if I got abducted? You know, I'd I'd be Keller, man. You'd be Keller? I I got you. I got you too. I'd go <laughs> I'd go right I'd go abduct anybody else and some, some special needs uh people yeah it, yeah <laughs> good lord <laughs> um i would definitely abduct anyone and just lock them up in a crate for you you and know just, and turn the shower water on yeah. hot or cold and let them you know kind of what, torture what uh what would you what, what what temperature would you use the most hot or cold honestly i feel like it's the it's the it's the balance it's like Oh, I'm really hot. Then cold, bam. Yeah, hot again. Get them. You got to get both. Yeah. Because if you're just going hot, I mean, their body will eventually get used to it. Yeah. If you're like, going cold, your body it, will get used to it. I feel like cold is more of a merciful. Mm, yeah, hot. No, I would go hot over cold. But if I got both of the options, I'd do both of the options. Because yep. if you're feeling, oh, I'm expecting the hot, then the cold comes. Yeah, you, would, you would switch the cold it up on the hot comes. Yeah. You would just not say anything. You would kind of sneak in. Let it. Let it. Let it be real cold. Maybe they'll get like a little, I guess, like lethargic and just kind of open up. I mean, he Keller was dealing with something a little different. You know, it's it's you know, you're obviously Paul Dano's Alex Jones. Alex Jones had you know some some difficulties and expressing could, himself. Yeah, he just he couldn't do it. He had he had to take a different approach, which Keller didn't do. You know, he just went balls out, just merciless. But I feel like I would have used cold a lot more to try to get information, but it would have to be freezing. Yeah. You know? You can't make it like a mild. It's got to be 
extreme yeah. either way. It's kind of like, you know, which which way of torture would you rather do? Pull off someone's fingernails or uh, waterboard them, you know? Because waterboarding, you're not physically hurting anyone. You know, you're, you're, you're giving the illusion that they can't breathe, but they can. They just don't realize it. Pulling off someone's fingernails, that's a whole other thing. I'm feeling it right now on my fingers. As you just yeah, said I know. Fingers yeah. tingle a little bit. You know, so it, it depends on, you got to take an approach. I, I don't know how we got onto this discussing torture, but yeah, uh, already I think this is good podcasting. Yeah. Yeah, it's already good. <laughs> um, that's it for opening questions. Synopsis. Two girls get abducted. Their father, Keller Dover, goes on a rampage, takes matters into his own hands, while Detective Loki, seemingly to Keller, uh, is taking a sweet time. Um, if it, you haven't seen it in a while, and before I say this, go watch the movie if you haven't. Turns out to be Alex Jones, who you suspect stole the kids the whole time. It was his... Do, uh, I guess, how do you refer it's to like her? her? His his mom, but he was abducted by her. So yeah. it's kind of like it's not his mom, but like his abducted his abductive his, abductee mom. He's the abductee. His abductee mom. Yep. Uh, it was her the whole time. Holly. Holly. Yeah. Holly Jones. I uh, never. Saw, I honestly didn't see that coming. So you didn't see that coming. You didn't see Holly coming. That's what I was also trying to do. I was trying to go back to the first time I had watched it. Did I see it coming? It was one of those where I think I figured it out kind of right before it's like, boom, oh, twisted. Because yeah. I was like, is it her? Because, I don't know, it like, I feel like, for, at least for me, I know for a lot of people, just completely 180. Like, oh my God, yeah. I did not realize it was Holly, the, the mom, or the aunt. Oh my God. Instead, it was, at least for me, I was like, I think it's her. I think it's her. And then they're like, hey, it's her. Oh, oh. That's how I felt. So how, so you were completely, you the know, rug was cut, pulled I was, from under you. Uh, you know, there's only so many people it could be. But, like, so I was thinking, first I was thinking, it's obviously Alex Jones. He has something to do with it. Some, something has to do with Alex Jones. Then when... The guy came in, Bob Taylor. Ooh, I, I was like, okay, where's this going? It keeps jerking you. It's like a roller coaster. It keeps jerking you around. Yeah. Okay. I, you know, it's, yeah. <laughs> Boy, why, why do you have? To, this is what happens when I when I bring a young folk on. <laughs> so, um, but no, like it, it 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 was a twist on a twist. You know. Yeah. It's like <laughs> you got me still laughing. Oh, uh, but like at first you like, okay, you know, but there's also like two times where you feel the antagonist, the antagoni, you know, is Keller and, <laughs> and Loki. There are even times where you're like, is Loki the abductor? You know, Yo, there were yeah, times where I was like, across my mind. I was, I, I kept saying like, they're going to pull a cheesy move where like, oh, oh it's Loki. The whole oh. time he had like a fit, you know, you know, like the movie was playing you the whole time you know like yeah. he had a part in it you know so you, I wasn't the only one that felt that it seems by your reaction yeah no I did that came across my mind for, for a little bit okay but then I don't know Loki just he just kind of convinced me he was he was you know genuine yeah. throughout the film you know, Jake Gyllenhaal did a great job with Loki yeah it's all the minor details like you know the face twitch yeah the, the, the yeah. I, I, I loved he he added that himself. Yeah, no, I, he, I was gonna talk about yeah. that later. He there was a lot to his character that he just he was like, hey, look, I just want to try something a little different. I'm gonna throw this minute character, you know, a little detail into it. Yeah, I, I guess that's how Jake Gyllenhaal sounds. I mean, kind of, yeah. Yeah, I guess so. But I've been on a Jake Gyllenhaal kick lately. Yeah. Um, he, he, this movie he really packs it though. He really, I don't know. I guess we are coming off. I guess I just grew up watching, like, Day After Tomorrow, you know? Like, that was an early, I think, 2006. If you haven't... Have you seen that one? I have not. It, it's it's good. Yeah, I mean, it's all right. It's, uh... I guess it's been kind of forgotten in the 2000s, yeah. I guess. It was... I just grew up on it. You know, he was good. It's not like he did anything crazy. Donnie Darko, I hadn't seen until this past week. 
Um, I know that's pretty crazy. People are probably gonna really try to abduct me after hearing that. Like, no, we're gonna make you. We're gonna force <laughs> you to watch movies. Um, but there's a lot of movies. Yeah, that we we gotta do on the pod just because I have not seen. Um, but this one, he really shows his acting chops. I feel mm. like he really shows how much he will care about a character. Uh, he just he he's it shows that he's an actor. Yeah, because. You know, I watched Nightcrawler before I watched this. So I was like, okay, Jake Gyllenhaal, he's legit. He's a great he's the, he's, actor. He's the man. But after I watched this, it just put him from like you know, like A tier to S tier. It put him on the the, 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 the Sigma the S tier. The Sigma tier. The Sigma tier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Loki under, Lo, Detective Loki is an underrated Sigma. He is. No, like that haircut? You want that haircut? Yeah, I do want Hey. I don't know if I, I could, noticed you got a little haircut. I, got a, I did get a little haircut. I can't pull off the Loki haircut. I feel like I can't do the the mafia slicked back look. You know, I, I just can't do it the way he did without looking too greasy or something. I don't know. <laughs> he just did it and looked suave. You know, yeah, it did. I gotta find my own way of being suave, and that's the haircut. It's not it. But no, like I, I just I didn't realize he had so much range until I watched this. I guess I, I still need to watch another Denis Villeneuve, yeah. uh, Enemy, Enemy. I still need to watch that. Um, you know, there's 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 some more Jake Joan Hall. Like I mean, Southpaw, Southpaw. Um, there's Stronger, I think. And mm. last year he came out with Ambulance. Yeah, and uh, wait, seems, The Guilty. Eh. So yeah, 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 yeah. They're nocturnal am- animals, but um, as a twenty year old and. Donnie Darko, he was phenomenal. Yeah. Um, but, you know, going on other ranges, we've only known Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. You yeah, know? and uh, The Prestige, he was... The uh, Prestige, yes. He, he's always kind of been... I don't know, this was a new kind of role for him, I yes. think. And he played it very well. I mean, whenever, you know, I was thinking of you know, who, who would be better at this position... Yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't think of anyone. Really, yeah. I couldn't think of anyone because he really embodied Keller yeah. perfectly. I mean, we'll get into recasting later because there were a lot of people who were up for the role, but I think it really landed into the right hands. I agree. But I don't know. Like we'll talk about this later. But a little sidebar. Like I feel like he surprised us. Like these other guys would have maybe. I would have been open for their surprise, but he brought it in. He felt. He felt like a carpenter and a plumber, you know, like he felt like he would yeah. take his son out hunting. Yeah. Which I don't, you know, after watching The Greatest Showman, you know. Like, yeah, I don't I, see that. I don't see that. He's too uh, too clean, you know, usually, or he's too much of a, I guess, lack of better words, a meathead with Wolverine, you know, you just think of him growling and stuff. <laughs> Whereas with this, he's just yelling. He was a stage performer. I didn't re- I didn't watch like Oklahoma or any of his stage performances. But you can kind of see that because he's just sometimes he's a little too strong, you know. He's a little too like I'm this angry dad, you know, and slamming stuff. Yeah, I think it had a good effect though. It did. It really drew me in, and I could almost not that I could see myself in him, but I could I see where he's coming from. Yeah, and I could see kind of like the upbringing he's had and. His background, you know, like yeah. his basement was full of survival. He, he was a prepper. Yeah, he was a big prepper. Yeah. So this to happen to him, that was that was. Yeah, you know, it's like you can't prepare for everything. Yeah, and it like can he says, to anyone. That's like he thing. says, and basically the tagline, you know, pray for the best, hope for the worst. Uh, you know, pray for, pray for the prepare for the best. Uh, pray for uh, wait. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, wait. I know. I, I know. I added it to like the thing, but um. Oh shoot! I can't even. I can't even think. But uh, prepare for the worst. Pray for the best. Yeah, that's, that's it. what it is, right there. Why can't I even come up with it? Thank you, thank you. Um, <laughs> but no, I mean, uh, he he did phenomenal. Um, I love the opening. I love how bland it is. It yeah. really sets the tone. Yeah, and what they did, they put the. I did. I did notice this. Y'all might know. Y'all may have noticed this too. They put the the yellowish kind of golden. Uh, touch over the scene to right. make it more inviting with uh like the interior design yeah of the house like on thanksgiving exactly it felt, was more yeah, yeah it felt kind of like oh this is a great warm. family dynamic and mm-hmm. you know you really i mean it 
it almost reminded me of my own my own house. Yeah, and that's what I, that's what I like too. Is you know you do get a little bit of a sense of the ominous feel the the way the movie may have a little bit of a dragging feel just with the opening shot you know kudos to roger deakins too who we'll talk about later yeah um he you know it's just the opening shot with him and the son hunting and the lord's prayer just comes up and that's oh, yeah. that's it that's all you hear and then the way he's telling his son you know he's like you know what's your favorite thing you know my, the main thing your grandfather taught me and you know the exactly what we had tr- trouble yeah. talking about. Yeah, the the line. Yeah, the, the line. line. <laughs> we'll just refer to it as the line. That way, yep. we don't have brain aneurysms. But um, <laughs> but uh, so but then that's what I, another thing I noticed: the way the family dynamics, the way they interacted with each other. Right. Uh, I don't know why it really keeps sticking to me when uh, it shows both Keller and Franklin, played by Terrence Lawrence. Ter- yeah, Terrence Lawrence. How they're uh, they're setting up a table, like they pulled the table apart, and yeah, the uh, little yeah, girls like, playing little with the girls rat, and they and they come up and they're like, "Daddy, can I go to uh, Joy's house? Because it's Anna and Joy." Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the uh, the two daughters who are then kidnapped. Yep. Um, right after their Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah. And right after you kind of see the RV, you also see it before everything. Yeah, because she's with the she's with her the brother, mm-hmm. the the brother and uh, Joy's daughter, uh, Franklin's daughter, Franklin's or, daughter, yeah, Franklin's daughter and Joy's sister. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. there there's four people. Two are like teenagers. The other two are little girls. Yeah, they go up to the they go up to the RV. Right. Just for a little reminder, they go up to the RV and they start messing on it, messing with it. Yeah. And. Kind of gives they're you a like, little sense. I this. think there's someone inside, so it kind of gets you in that. Oh, uh oh, what's going to happen with this RV? Yeah, this RV is going to be tied into it, and we already know what's going to happen. Yeah, you know, you can already pick up like and, it, and, and then the tone kind of, you know, yeah, just get more intense. And then there's like this weird shot of just a tree, and it just kind of lingers on it, and you have something for it. Yeah, I, I put the trees in here. Yeah, the trees. We'll go into more about the trees later. Okay. All right. I'll, I just have a little thing on the trees. I'd like to see what you know, hear what you say. But um, I, I just was like, why, why is this here? I was like, this is just definitely something telling you something's wrong. Yeah. Something's not, something that shouldn't be happening is happening. You know, that type of deal. Very ominous. Yeah. This gives you that sense one. of disparity pretty much. Like, okay, I feel trapped on this frame. You know, like, why are we trapped on this? Why are we focusing too much? Um, and it just it played really well. And you already know. And then once the parents start freaking out a little bit, they're like, hey, where are the girls? Kind of there's yeah. levels to their Level. anxiety. Yeah. And, I, and uh, you know, we'll talk about this more later because you said to look up uh, production stuff. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I saw I, I was watching their um, behind the scenes. And the director, uh, Denny Villeneuve. 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 Uh, <laughs> he, he was kind of telling him, like, now you're annoyed. Now you're getting mm. more anxious. And he was building it up perfectly. Yeah. Like, that was a great scene of the film. How they that start was. off kind of like, oh, yeah, where are the girls? Uh, they're probably over there. We don't know. They go downstairs, talk to the other two. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, we don't know. Yeah, they're kind of carefree, but at the same time, they're. they're like, it was okay, also realistic. Yeah. Like, where they're like, oh. Should we be concerned? I would just keep watching the movie, but yeah, and then okay, something's yeah. something's up. And it starts pouring rain outside. Yeah, uh, that's when you know. That's when you. Know. Yep, that's you are, where, they are going to find those girls. You, you know? mentioned the golden hue before. You know the kind of the golden palette. It goes almost, away. It goes away. And, it goes and, gray. During the movie, it starts to desaturate. It mm-hmm. starts to get more and more gray. Yeah, bring you more and more disparity because every day the girls are gone. The, the Keller feels more and more disparity. Yeah. And almost like more stress and you just, everything starts to feel cold. Yeah. Which, like oh that. man, I love it. Um, you know, I mentioned the the families, the interactions. I, I just wrote a lot of notes. I'm going to try to consolidate as much as I can. But um, also a good opening is, uh, you know, they're all at Thanksgiving, but where is Loki? 
He's at a an Asian a, restaurant. Yeah, a little Asian by himself. By himself. So that's how you get introduced to Loki. It's the back shot, remember? Mm-hmm. And I it's love those. the back shot of him going in. It's like zooming in on him. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he gets a call. Yeah. But what I liked is that little interaction. He had the interaction with the, uh, the waitress. With, yeah, the waitress. And then, you know, he's looking at the the Chinese Zodiac calendar and he's asking her questions like, well, you know, like what, which one are you? I'm this. So he's like very in depth with it. You know, he's he's very, he knows how to answer questions, ask questions. You know, he's, he's more of an intellectual is mm-hmm. what you see. And I, I thought that was real cool and a real good. But then you get the call like, okay, things have definitely taken a turn. Yeah. So it, it did real well. Um, but then you, you know, they, of course, pull up on the RV, you show how he's going to interact with an actual occurrence where he's actually thrown into the forefront of a situation. He's thrown right in. Yeah. Which I like. Yeah. It shows he's not scared. Yeah. He right? goes in first. He, he tells the other guys to back he's off. Like, no, I got this. Yeah. He's a solo guy, which yeah. to be honest, I think doesn't play out. I mean, it honestly doesn't really play out that well for him at the end. Being a solo guy, yeah, he barely got away. Yeah, he had his partner come in, bang, bang, get right, the girl. But he's a solo guy. This is kind of his thing. Yeah, and like they mentioned, like you know, like you've cra- you've got, a- you've uh, succeeded with every case you've gotten. That's what your captain said. And so he's almost like he's trying to go for this self fulfillment, almost, which I, I you know, I I thought was. A cool character dynamic for him. Yeah. And then, but also, Kettler's kind of the same way. It's like, I've got to take matters into my own hands. Yeah. Which is the big theme of this. And he will... And what he, will you do for your kids? Yeah. That's a big theme. Here are the extents that I will go to. Yeah, exactly. So I thought that was so cool. Um, uh, you get both sides with uh, Keller and Loki whenever... Uh, Detective Loki comes in and is talking to the wife like, here, here's what's going on. Contact me. Here's my number. Stuff like that. But also you get like Keller. He comes in. He's like, look, well, have you tried this yet? You know, he's like, look, we've got him. He's like, well, y'all got us like on lie detectors. Did y'all detect him? He's like, well, yeah, but the thing is you can't understand. You know, if you don't understand the question, it won't pick it up. Yeah. And And then there's a whole question that Keller was asking. So it was said that he had like 10 IQ. Like, yeah. very, very low IQ. And he was like, well, how can someone with 10 IQ drive a drive a van? Yeah. And then it was sort of like, wait, is he really 10 IQ? Yeah. Is he, you know, is yeah. he faking it? Is is it him the whole time? Right. Which, I thought that was just cool. Uh, yeah, I think that was cool. That it's it makes you think of these... These possibilities. Alternative, like, it makes you think all over the place. Like, how, he's right. How can he drive? Is that actually him driving? You know, all these things. Like, how is he able to do all these, you know, like, and also, like, I feel like the IQ of a 10-year-old is, I don't know exactly how, like, the science behind it works, but I feel like he would have been able to drive, you know? Yeah, 10-year-olds, I mean, they're dumb, but they're not, like, they're not that that dumb. dumb. (laughs) Yeah, they're not to the point where they can't, Can't like... understand, like, a simple question, like, yeah, what's your, I mean, you had trouble answering what his name was. Most 10-year-olds... These days are smarter than me, honestly. You know, it's kind of. <laughs> I was like, uh, heard some six year olds the other day, or like around that age range. They're like, like, I wish I was that smart and bright as a six year old. You know, like I was not there. I feel you. I feel you. Yeah. Um, the moms. I felt like they their portrayal was perfect. Viola Davis. She's now like probably my all time favorite actress. Really. Like, I thought her, because here's how I felt about Viola Davis. She had, like, a presence. I don't know how to describe that. She had a presence where she was, like, a normal, everyday mom. Nothing too special about her, but she had a presence where it was like, why is is she so powerful? Like, why, why am I feeling all of her emotions without her going over the top or underperforming? She had like a right in the middle. It was almost like the uncanny valley almost where you're so normal. But like there's just something about you that's just very powerful, her performance. Right. So I don't know, but uh, even um, even uh, Maria Bello, Grace Dover. Yeah. Um, she 
she did great with her disparity. She was oh, always yeah, no, grieving. She, she, yeah, have it. Yeah, she was like just unmotivated. Mm-hmm. She was just in bed all day and just yeah. can't do this anymore. Her, her and Keller, the way that they took it so differently. Yeah really added to the family dynamic like your true almost your true colors really come out in these moments yeah and they portrayed that like really well because i feel like uh franklin and um viola davis's character i can't think of her name right now but i can't remember i feel like they were balanced out their exactly approach to the situation was a little more balanced out whereas keller and grace polar opposites yeah like he was out and then she was like tacking on all the stress and stuff onto him, like you know, I, you, I feel so safe when I'm with you. Why can't you bring her back? And then just like all these things, and you could see his reaction, like I've got to take this seriously. And matters into my own hands, kind of thing. Yep. Yeah, and Viola Davis, uh, you know, she had some great, some great scenes with her, mm-hmm. like the one where you know Bob Taylor broke into the house. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh my gosh, I think she's taking a bath. Yeah. Oh, the the daughter? Oh, the daughter. It was the daughter. But well, Yeah, it's like, is he going to take her too? Yeah. Which, I, I that's that part. And then, also, I like that reaction, that little throw in. Like, this is also another thing that happens to the family if when tragedy like this happens. You get a daughter who has basically separation anxiety now because she doesn't want to be left alone and kidnapped. You know, like... <laughs> Which I thought was totally cool and very, I don't know, like I just very like redeemable. You yeah, know? I like that. I, I did too. Um, and then just the whole process of Loki, everything he's having to do, he's very on top of things. You see that side, but you also see that Keller doesn't. You know, you just you you get glimpse into both of theirs, but you know that they can't see into each other's. You know. Yeah. Which was cool and added more to the the effect of the emotions. Played more on the emotions. Yeah, of, no, the emotions were racing throughout the entire film. You know, they they made you feel a certain way, and that's what movies are supposed to do. But this movie, you know, I, these are my favorite types of movies. Mm-hmm. You know, the real suspense ones. Mm-hmm. And this made me feel like, like I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm 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 stressed. Yeah. If the entire time, basically, and but there are moments. This worked in in the favor of the movie. There are moments where you were like. Okay, I think this is gonna get better. Yeah, and then it just bam, spike back, right back nope. up. It, yeah, that didn't get better. Nope. It, yeah, it's like it's like you thought <laughs> it never got better, really. Exactly. Um, there's uh the time when uh you know just little things are uncovered, like you mentioned earlier, like little yeah. tiny things, kind of in layers almost, or layers are peeled back. Yeah, exactly. Um, you get uh the priest because you oh, know that he's was a, a registered. Scene. Probably my favorite scene, actually. Really? I will admit. I, I don't know. Something scene. about the basement. I was like, that's so cool. That he's jumping into this basement. basement. You don't know what's you don't know, down yeah, you there. You don't know what's in there. And then the whole, okay, so the whole maze thing. Yeah. That's something we're going to need to dive into. Mm-hmm. You got any, you, you got some stuff on the maze? I mean. Actually, that was the thing I was going to say. It's like you notice the, the pendant. The, the maze little, the chain the thing. Yeah. You're like, as a, as a viewer, you're like, seen this in movies before where someone's wearing a pendant or a brooch something like that and you're like oh that's got play into something yeah you know that that's what i saw in this exactly that's what i mean yeah the whole the whole maze part of the story was it really made me think it almost drew my attention off trying to figure out oh, who did it who did it i'm like mm-hmm. what's this whole maze thing about maybe if i can cover the maze yeah and i can figure out where the girls are that's a that's you know whenever right. the girls are trapped in the house they're they get, they're given a book it's yeah. just like complete the maze, but it's an uncompletable maze. Yeah. Like Which you really is, can't complete it. You can't actually. You're basically a prisoner in the maze. Which all the girls are. I mean Yeah, I, I have a little part on you know the title of the movie, Prisoners. So at first you might think it's called Prisoners because of the physical prisons. The girls. That they're putting the girls, Keller at the end, Keller and in. Alex Jones. Yeah. But they're, they're all prisoners. Which I noticed this time, I was like, oh, Alex Jones and Keller are now prisoners, not just the girls. Yeah. But as I went in deeper, this, this is what I have right here. It's oh, great. It's great. I'm, I'm excited. As I went deeper, in the movie as a whole was an examination of the kinds of prisons people find themselves in physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Huh. So the emotional part was about the uh, how the disappearances destroyed 
you know, just destroyed. Like the emotions, the emotions were racing between the, the two families. Right. Uh, I have the mental part was most about how Alex and Bob Taylor stuff that happened to them after they were kidnapped. How they're, you they're know, prisoners of themselves. Exactly. And their past of their past, and they can't escape from it. Wow. They're 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 prisoners of their past. That's insane. And then uh, spiritual part was first started with Holly Jones yes. and her husband, who was the you know the mass. He abducted a lot of people, was found in the, uh, the basement. Bragged about killing 16 children, something like that? Good number. Yeah, well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, <laughs> high number. <laughs> it's, it's like, yeah, I know, I, I know what you mean, I know yeah, what you okay. mean. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, so how they were, uh, you know, how they were a good, devout Christian couple. Yeah. Whenever their kid died from, was it cancer? Yeah. They just Yeah, because she mentioned they were, spre- she was like, we were spreading the good word and all that good stuff. Yeah. And now they're just, you know, they, they're destroyed. Their faith is basically destroyed. Also, Dover starts out with the, the Lord's Prayer. Mm-hmm. And as it goes on, you see Keller kind of start to lose it, kind of go off the rails. Yeah. And you're thinking, like, what's going on? I mean, uh, I don't know. It, it, it's, it's really, it's a really deep dive into those yeah. sort of, sort of fields. It really is. I, I didn't, I mean, I noticed some of that, but no, like, you make a really good point. And like, I didn't notice the depth of it, too. Yeah, prisoners. Yeah, I mean, it goes with everything. You know, you notice, like, how both Bob Taylor and Alex Jones, who were, you know, different, actually different names, but they, like you said, they were prisoners of their past. And then, like I said before, I realized, you know, Alex had become a prisoner of Keller when he was locked in. Yeah. And then Keller, of course, himself becomes a prisoner. A prisoner at the end. And... Uh, th- yeah, no, you're right. How spiritually, you know, right, how spiritually, the faith it. was imprisoned, basically. Exactly, you know? exactly. And I, 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 that's super cool. Yeah, it, it, it's so many layers of the just the term, just the term prisoners. You know, it's yeah. a it's a very deep term. I, I love it. I love it. Yeah. Um, let's see. I mentioned how you know when Keller's wife Grace was crying, and. Add like visibly adding the stress to Keller. Just it works on you too. Oh you're, yeah, you're just like you, you want it. You just kind of want to say like, shut up, like stop. You know he's he's out trying there. his hardest. You know, he, yeah, he's doing what he can. Exactly. What are you doing, lying here? But then you can't blame her. You know, it's yeah, like it, it's, it's like, a weird dynamic. Yeah, it's when like you kind of arguing with yourself. You're almost a prisoner of your own opinions. Yeah, dude. Whoa, that was <laughs> that was a big onion layer you just pulled. Yeah. That was that was good. <laughs> no, no. Wow. Okay. Okay. So Back you're to gonna go punch. on the you're gonna go on the theologian uh, plaque hall of fame. <laughs> be right there. Yeah, we'll, we'll probably be right there. Theologians in training, something like that. Um, but no, I mean, uh, I was gonna mention like maybe I could have added that to the opening question. Would you maybe have been her? Would you have been just the one to completely break down? Like I don't know. There's uh, a reality where I feel like I would have been, like I probably would yeah. have just lost it. Like I would not have known known how to deal with the the grief of losing my child. I mean, that's you know, it's hard to honestly, unless you're in that situation, know what you would do. Yeah, I I hope I wouldn't just break down. I hope I'd try to yeah. find you know the the my kid. Go to the extent. Go to the extent. Yeah, exactly. Um, but. Let's get into the scene where Keller is threatening to break Alex's hand after he abducts him. What about the part when Alex, uh, you know, like they release Alex? Short glass. Well, no, when Alex, uh, he's staking out, and Alex picks up that dog, and you know, huh? Oh, he has a darkness wrong to with him. him. He has a darkness to him. And I was like, I was like, oh my gosh, it's him. It, it Whenever adds, I saw him do that. It validates Keller's opinion that you are starting to kind of like, no, he didn't do it because. You know, like that's just how the movie's gonna work. But then they show that scene, and you kind of see a different side to him that you hadn't seen because he was just being interrogated, and he was just couldn't even think. Now with these, he's with the dog. You're like, he's a psycho. Yeah, that's what he would do with a with an innocent. Oh yeah, and he was singing the song. Yeah, that they were singing on the Thanksgiving. Yeah, the Batman, the the Batman, uh, Robin lays an egg song. Yeah, he was singing that song. Keller was listening. He was like. Yeah, he's like, that's it. That's and it. Pulls the gun on him, and then you're. But then he abducts 
Alex himself, you know. Takes him prisoner. He take makes him his prisoner. And then of course like he gets uh Franklin, Terrence Howard's character. And uh he he shows him, like, look, this is you know, this is uh the way we're gonna make him talk. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then uh he's like, I need your help. And, he's like, and he's, he's telling him, he's like, this isn't this is not cool, man. You know, we can't be doing this. He's like, Nope, this is the only way. And just beating just beating this guy to a pulp. Yeah. I mean it's it's graphic at times. Yeah. But it's very very realistic. It makes you like, Yeah, I, I would do this. Yeah. I, I don't know if I actually would. I, I, don't, I don't know if I would, I would go that far, but I you know, I may. Yeah. And it just it kind of, that's what the thing does too. Like you know, the movie just keeps asking himself, so where would you be? And he's so dedicated. He's not. He's never like, all right. He, it might not be him. Maybe I made a mistake. Yeah. He's always like, it has to be him. It has to be him. Yeah. He's so sure of it. And also, the whole thing keeps is a test of your morality. Mm. It's almost like, yeah. I think it's va- <clears throat> valid that he's beating this guy, or you know, he may be on side Franklin. No, I thought I thought it was valid. Yeah, I, I thought so too personally but then like but you know people may have different opinions like yeah. oh come on it's not yeah. i mean you're not sure if it's this guy innocent they'll proving guilty kind of thing right he may be faking this whole thing of him having a low iq you know you just never know I mean, he may like alex may be faking I mean, that would have been crazy if he like looked at him and said something like, like yeah i feel like that would have been too movie tropey though mm, yeah you i know, like almost, how, i like how this movie went i uh, like how it was almost spoiled another movie i'd so i'm not going to get into that but by the end, it would have been too predictable of a twist. Like, ah, he was faking his... Whole his, time, man. Uh, disability, I guess. I know there's some a lot of words that are commonly used that are not appropriate, apparently. Right. Um, but you, maybe he was faking the whole time type thing. But that's... I don't know. But that scene is what everyone knows, basically, where also Hugh Jackman basically mostly improvised... With the hammer, threatening him in the face. That was one of my favorite scenes. I mean, I've Classic. seen that all over. You know, where he has the hammer. Where's my, you know, the where's my daughter in the yeah. mirror? Yeah, with all the, uh, you know, lately I've been watching like I guess film TikToks when like films and yeah. stuff. Not <laughs> big TikToker, but what I have seen it's is film like, bro TikToks are here. Are the, like, here are the most perfectly acted scenes. Yeah, it's always best acting performances. It always starts with this one or the pretty or the, much there will be blood one. Yeah, there will be blood. Like I abandoned my boy. <laughs> We're gonna. I'm not gonna fall into that trap of yeah. recreating that. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we blood. Paul Dano's in both. Yeah, Paul Dano's in both. Um, I know we talked a lot about Hugh Jackman, and Viola Davis, and um, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. Paul Dano, phenomenal. You yeah. know, a lot of tie-ins to like, like hey, no more riddles. A lot of tie-ins to. Predicting that he'll play the Riddler in this movie, yeah. which I thought was funny. I don't know if, like, maybe... I feel like uh, I'm blanking on the director of the Batman's name. Oh, uh, Matt Reeves. Matt Reeves. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, he, Actually, I, never, I just knew that. I don't know. I, I knew it, but I was totally blanking, so thank yeah. you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, I feel like maybe he watched Prisoners and was like, okay, um, I think we're going to do this as the Riddler. Yeah. In fact, why don't we just take the same guy, you know? Yeah, the why thing, not? The thing with, with Paul Dano is he basically plays himself in every movie he's in. I don't know about plays himself. Maybe not himself. Okay, well, that's but not what he did. What he did but. say, I will add to this, is that he loves playing these type of characters. Exactly. Characters where something's not, something's off. Yeah. And I don't know, he, he just apparently loves playing these characters, which I see, I get, you know. I can kind of see it in him. Yeah. I, he kind of looks like the type of guy to just get beat up. Yeah. He, he does have a, a oddly punchable face. I don't know why I think of it like I mean, that. I mean, I feel like I just punch him. Like, yeah. I feel like I could just become Keller and just... Yeah. Maybe it, it might feel like a little, a little like, fl- you know, like punching a, a Stretch Armstrongs, you know? I don't know. I, I don't know if that's how... I, th- that's, <laughs> I guess that's where I closely resemble his face as a Stretch Armstrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he also... These characters, you can do so much with them. And he seems like he really enjoys, I don't know, just doing the most that he can, really milking that character and just oh, yeah. really going for it. Because you can go over the top of these characters sometimes, but there, you also have to find a middle ground. And I can exactly. see where he can enjoy that. Yeah. And he's 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 perfect. He playing, you know, not this character is like deranged, 
but like the Riddler, you know, he's obviously deranged. Right. But you can see where he can he can do a lot with it. Yeah, and you know the scene where he says, "They only cried when I left them." Mm-hmm. I'm I'm like, oh my gosh, that's a big clue. That's a big clue right there. Yeah, he's and, but o- of course only Keller hears it. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so it's not. It, <laughs> yeah. You see everyone else going against him, but you know, like, no, he's in the right. He he actually heard something. Yeah. So I yeah I love where you feel that too. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, the part where uh, Loki is now following Keller, because Keller, you can tell... Yeah, he almost he, suspects he, Keller in a way. Yeah, of he s- does. Either of abducting or just something. He knows something's off Something's of going on. No, something that's not right. Some, yeah. So he's, he's following him, and then there's that scene that you always see in the TikToks, too, where... He's in the car and he's yelling. He's like, "I want to find my daughter! Find my daughter!" You know, just like yelling and beating the dash. He's like, "Hey, hey, hey chill, relax. I need you to calm down. Go home, get some sleep." And he's like, "Yeah." He's like, "Find my daughter, then." You know. Yeah, and then he goes and walks off to you know the the house. Yeah. To go torture Paul Dana. Pretty much. That's what he's doing. But then you also see like he's crafty. He can lie. Yeah, no, he can lie. He can lie pretty so he well. He goes in the he goes in the liquor store. Get some liquor. Yeah. He's like, but even then, like, he's like, why were you walking the other way? Like, well, I haven't taken a drink in, it's like 12, eight years, something like that. And he's like, I figured, you know, by the time they open, I would have changed my mind, but I saw you and I knew, made my mind up. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. it's like, oh, he's good. He's good. Yeah. He knows how to lie. Um, but also the way, like, when he's interrogating Paul Dan, Alex Jones, and then all of a sudden, um, you hear the car door open, uh, close, and you see Loki coming in. He thinks real quickly. He goes down and falls asleep. He's like, I don't want to drink in front of my wife. So you know, like just more. And he shows him, like he's like, I want to tour the house. And he shows him, and he's like, he's like risking I know. his secret. And you you feel that for him, you know, like uh, I, I'm on uh, Keller's side of this. I didn't, I didn't want. You know, I wanted him to keep getting them so that maybe he'd say something. Yeah. He, I mean, he finally, he did his best to talk. He, he's a, he's a um, special needs individual, and mm-hmm. um, he had trouble, like, expressing himself. You know, yeah. you know that's because, well, the main reason for that is whenever he was abducted, they drugged him so much, he almost lost touch with the reality. He became, like, yeah. you know, a prisoner of his own mental state. So he, it was hard for him to, uh, you know, express himself. He finally said yeah. Follow the maze, Which, and you'll find there. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, and he, well, you know, whenever he was abducted, it was a little bit different because they took him in. They didn't. They didn't lock him up. And well, they may have at the beginning. Yeah, but then they got to a point where they could easily kind of manipulate his sense of reality, exactly, if you will. Yeah, I mean, I should have done a lot more research on. It would have been better to have more research on actual kidnapping accounts like Mm. what actually happens but like i've heard of stuff like this happening where you know when an individual is kidnapped from especially such a young age they grow up they're basically they're basically their their captors yeah you know they've basically become exact replicas of them basically yeah and they and and he doesn't have any inclined to like get out you know he's like Mm -hmm. well this is my family i mean he obviously knew of his past before because a little detail he parked in his and, old house yeah. every night. So he so, knew something. But he, he just maybe was like, oh, I'll park here. Yeah. This looks familiar. I'll park here and sleep. Yeah. Which, how long, for how long did he do that? How long was he out free, you know, from Holly, you know? Yeah. Like, that was always a question I had, like, why, why'd they let him freely wander? You just, it, was, it was just interesting. They they trusted that he was so far deep. Yeah. He wouldn't escape, maybe. But then, like, you know, and then, of course, th- he was interrogated and he wouldn't crack or anything. Yeah, he had loyal. He showed loyalty. Yeah, he showed loyalty uh, to Holly. And even, sh- like, you do see a sense of fear whenever yeah. Detective Loki is interrogating him. He's like, you mind leaving us alone? Mind giving me a minute with Alex? Yeah, and you, you can kind of... You could see him kind of scared that she's leaving but it's like he's just uncomfortable that he's being interrogated alone. Yeah. So, right. I don't know, very, very interesting. 
Um, you see, uh, I thought it was funny that Loki just kind of busted into every door he went into. Yeah, he didn't really knock. He just kind of went in. Like, <laughs> with Holly, with the priest, with Keller at the place, he just opened the window and just jumped through the window. Didn't yeah. even go to... He didn't even go to the door. You know, he just, I know, he just... He's that He's that guy. Yeah. He's him. Yeah, exactly. He's like, he's like I gotta be kind of cool and like edgy about this you know <laughs> that's that i just thought that was funny um i thought it was cool like you know we touched on how keller couldn't say the lord's prayer you know if you know the lord's prayer um or uh it's i mean I even am i getting my prayers mixed up there's so many prayers lord, there's the lord's, lord's prayer. prayer there's um uh the apostles creed no but that's not it. It's the Lord's Prayer. It's the Lord's Prayer, he says. Okay, yeah. So, um, he, uh, if you don't know, like, f- uh, forgive us for our transgressions or our trespasses. As, as we forgive those who as we trespass for- against us, right? He couldn't say that part. I thought that was oh, cool. Oh, he couldn't? Remember? Whenever he's I miss saying that it. Though. Remember whenever he's saying it, as he's in the interrogating, uh, he kind of just breaks down at one point. As he's interrogating oh, Alex, yeah, that's the spirit. And he just he just kind of stops, and he lo- he's like looking over. You can tell, like, oh, he he can't forgive. He can't forgive him. You I know, mean, which, I, I I don't blame, blame him. him. But he knows he knows he's he knows like he's in the wrong. But yeah. he has to do it. He knows he has to do it. He's like, I've become a monster. This is what it's done to me. Yeah, and that was Holly's thing. So, what Holly is used to experiencing is. Kind of what the mom experienced. Like, I mean, she's used to, she's abducted a lot of little kids, right? Right. So, basically, whenever her child died, or really whenever she abducts others, she's used to seeing them kind of break down. Yeah. But this, you know, with, with Keller, this was a different effect. Yeah. He was so, he was just constantly, but it almost, it broke him down the same. Yeah. In the end, Pretty they're much. both just in ruin. Yeah, no, that's oh, that's that's good. Yeah, it, it completely happened to him, even though he wasn't. Even though it wasn't the same, but it did. It happened in all a way. crossroads. Go right there. Yeah, they bring you to the same detriment, basically. Man, that's oh, look at you go. Look at you go. Yeah. Um, no, I, I uh, of course, once things start to kind of. Fit, pan out. Um, how about when uh, the the uh, vigil lighting for uh, Joy? I think that's how you pronounce oh, it. Oh yeah, the lighting. And you see uh, Bob Taylor, and then that whole thing He's happens. Chasing him across the backyard, jumping the fences. Yeah, I you, mean, I, I was like, I was above and beyond. I feel like for <laughs> he was uh, just how happened to be there at the vigil lighting, and then, and and then he sees them like he he sees him like walking away, and he's kind of like. I don't know. That was almost a little bit unrealistic. But yeah. It added. It, it was. It was interesting. It was yeah, almost it was like he was. wanted to be part of that because he knows, like, you know, this is for an abducted child. I was abducted. I was abducted. I was abducted by these same people. You just. He may know, but yeah, it was just. I, plus, I like that actor, um, David Dastmalshian. I'm probably butchering his name. Sorry, but if you're <laughs> watching or listening, just so happen, um, hit us up. Yeah, um, be on right sitting this chair. Here. Sitting this chair right here, we have it open for you. But I, I've always liked that actor. You know, yeah. he, he's in Ant Man, he's in Dune, he's in the new Suicide Squad. He was in uh, the Dark Knight, as I told you earlier. Yeah, Dark Knight. Um, he's just in a bunch of different stuff. He always he has a very distinct look. He does a lot of Denis Villeneuve pictures. Um, I don't know. He just always plays this weird character. You know, he has yeah. his own. Like I said, he has his, his own, own little look. like aura. Yeah, you can kind of. Oh, it's kind of weird. You can trust him, but you or can't. you can't. He he does either. And you're like, well, most of the time, it's you know. can't trust him. Yeah. So uh, even in like Ant Man, he plays like, more of a comedic role. I was <laughs> like, I can't trust this guy. You know. Yeah. <laughs> um, you, you could definitely see him ki- kidnapping a kid too. Oh yeah, hundred percent. You know something's up. He he almost he was obsessed with the perfect abduction. Yeah. And you remember that book about yeah. the perfect abduction. Yeah. That was about the dad. Mm-hmm. And, you know, how he abducted him perfectly. And he's he's reading this he's reading this book, getting obsessed with it. And being like, I, he sees himself 
in these pages, in these yeah. words. And, he, and he's relating it to himself. He, he becomes obsessed with the whole, you know, whenever you go to his house, mazes are all over yeah. the walls. And so he's still trying to figure out got, how to get out of the maze. He's got the buckets of, of snakes. Yeah, which is insane because you, you learn that the dad had, hit the abducting dad, you know, Holly's husband had snakes. Snakes. And so he had them. Something comes up with the snakes. Yeah. With, with Alex, he's always scared of snakes. Yeah, he had, well, she mentions he had an accident when he was little. You know, because she—that's where she, you find out she's like my husband always had snakes. You know, that's not my favorite memory. You know, stuff like that. Oh yeah, then you're like, wait, they're all connected. I get you kind of thinking. Yeah, they're connected. It's it's great how they're connected. Yeah, I really like. That As a part. viewer, you realize that, but not those, not the characters in the in the movie, which. Yeah, I, I just love how everything starts connecting. It's all a big spiderweb, basically. It's like you get something from one character and something from another that piece it together. But both characters need, like, the other portion to really piece it. But right. you can piece it as a viewer. Right, exactly. Which I like, which I really did like. Which feeds on that that anxiety, you know? Yeah. I love it. Um, how about we try to get to the last part of the of the movie where everything's figured out. You know, you they find Joy. Uh, and then she was like, yeah, you were there because... Uh, Keller I saw went. you there. Yeah, no, and I was confused about this until I remembered Keller went to the house. Yeah, because remember, he did. He had to apologize. Yeah, he went to apologize. To mom, but it was kind of like I'm trying to look around this house, see if my girl is here. Yeah, but he went to apologize. Yeah, he was he was going there, kind he, of investigating yeah. off of a whim, basically. Yeah, and then he goes back again. Oh, uh, so remember the hot. Um, not the not the the hospital. He's looking for a joy. maze. He tells her he's like, I keep having this dream. I'm stuck in a maze to see if she like perks up, which she doesn't. She's like, hmm, because she's good too. Oh she's yeah, good she at is lying. good. She's good at lying, and so you. But he's that he knows something's here about. And a then maze. she and that, but that almost revealed it because she's like, he knows. Yeah, she's like, he must be on to me. She, she's a she was smart. Yeah, I didn't was, like her, but she was smart. She also didn't seem to care about Alex being missing, too. That's how. That's what I noticed. You know, she kind of hit it that the dog was gone too, but they found the. And she she like she felt like it would get him Alex into trouble. You yeah, know? all she was just a lot. Uh, we can get into Holly's character. I liked her as a bad as the antagonist. I liked it. You know, for I'm sure for a lot of viewers they never saw it coming. Yeah, which which was great. You know, she's like. And at the very end, you can really see her true colors. The lethal injection scene yes. is one of, like, the hospital scene, like, when they're flying to hospital. It's probably one of my favorite. After she shot, after she shot Loki, basically in the, in the, in the sh- head. Was, what was the head? No, it was on the head. Remember when it, he's in the hospital, he has oh, bandages yeah. up here? He, he survived a head shot. She nicked him, basically. Yeah. And it was just like, oh, and, but he's bleeding in the face. Yeah. And he's he, like. You couldn't see it. It was high. It was kind of blurry. And it was like. Re- pouring rain, of yeah. course. He's bleeding out. It's just, it's intense. Uh, yeah. Oh, like the daughter's dying. Yeah, in the she's backseat. she's vomiting. You could see like her, she's foaming at the mouth too. Yeah. Oh, it's dark, but you you could see her foaming at the mouth, and the lethal injection injection is working. Oh yeah. But you see him pick it up. And you're like, oh, this is he's he says, oh shit, this isn't good. <laughs> yeah. And she, they're on their way. You know, but like that's way you know he probably saw what drug it was and knew this is not good. This is lethal. Yeah. And so, of course, right after this is all happening, right after she made Keller, Keller basically had to surrender. You know, he did not want to be shot. Yeah, he had the gun in the back. <clears throat> he was like, he, he was, he was kept reaching it on for him. It. I don't know what's going on. With yeah, him. he should have kept it on him. I feel like you just never know. He was probably going to be separated from his from his uh. His bag, he probably should have brought two guns. That way he, she would have, she also didn't search his body. We didn't see. I mean, you know, she may have like been able to see the gun, but you know, yeah. if he had the big jacket, he he's carrying some jacket. Yeah, he's, he was, he was a prepper. So he had, he yeah. had all of his little nooks and crannies on him. Yeah. You know? He, you know, this is what he did. He said, I don't want to hurt you. And then I was like, oh, what are you doing? You got to get the gun. Yeah. He's like, dude, you should have been pointing the gun ready. at her. Yeah. But then she gets the gun. Yeah, she makes him you didn't, you drink didn't. the whatever, and I'm like, Ugh. I feel like, I thought he was gonna power through. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he kind of did power through. He kind of did. Sort Which uh, that was uh, that was ad lib where she like a little more, Mister Dover, oh, that a was little ad-libbed. more, because she was the actress. Um, oh, what's her name? What's her name? 
um, uh, Mar- Melissa Leo, she felt like it was not enough for a man his size. It wasn't believable. Yeah. And so he, that was his, like, he was no, like, No, I like that. And I was oh like, boy. maybe she'll stop right before, but she's an expert on this kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. She would know. Yes. Oh, if Melissa Leo is an expert on this stuff, maybe we should uh, watch out for her. <laughs> you know she's, about I mean? this, she's about to come in this she's door like, right she's like here boys drank this grape this grape fanta <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah no um that whole thing happens you feel you feel for for keller when, it, when he's uh, thrown in she shoots him in the leg makes him move the the trans am and everything and she and you're like, oh, he has to get out. It's like, he, there's no... I don't know. Is he going to make a last minute? Because you're also like, what would I do if I had a gun pointed at me? That's ha- that happens in movies all the time. I like, mean, you would have to obey. Yeah. You don't I mean, you're not shot. just going to like go out or pie, you're dead. Yeah. It's like, it makes... Um, all, it's like the morality test, basically. Like, I, do I approve of this beating of Alex Jones? Like, what would I do if I had a gun pointing at me? It always, It always happens in movies, but it's always... Interesting in that that play on emotion. Yeah, it's very prominent in this movie. Definitely. Like, what would I do in this situation? Yeah. In this, because there's like 50 of those in this. Yeah. You know, and then like some it's of the a biggest. It's involved, which is good. It yeah. gets you feel like you're there. Gives you a, a, a more heightened too. Like, mm. how, you know, would I react the same as this character? It's yeah. Probably the best in film history, I think. Really? Some of the best, make, like, questioning of yourself. Self reflection, but yeah, we mentioned how Loki's just driving. He gets there to the hospital. Of course, you know, this like one of those moments, like uh, when you know, back on the movie TikTok, when you see uh, Django and Unch- Unchained when he sl- when Leo slams the, oh, yeah. the glass, the tabletop. <laughs> and there's always that like the you know the memes of like you like. Pausing, we're like, did you know that he actually did that? <laughs> but it's the he same. He actually broke his head from he, that. Yeah, he was bleeding and kept going on. That was his real blood. But it was also like that's also the same thing with this. <laughs> where like, did you know that Jake Joan Hall actually slipped on ice in that? And when he, you know, because he was so dramatic. To, yeah, yeah, it was like the same thing, <laughs> where he actually was slipping on ice and stuff. It was, it was cool. <laughs> um, and then I thought it was funny. Just Grace Dover, just assumed he was right back at work you know as he's recovering from his gunshot to the forehead to the head she like <laughs> no well, grace dover was a she, she was a little bit out there she was out there she was out there I, I don't know she she uh she was off her rocker just a little bit yeah <laughs> just a bit but um no she was just like you're gonna find my husband aren't you he's like yeah if after i get better or like i don't know it was just it was. I thought that was funny, yeah. <laughs> but then of course he goes back to the thing, and but they think he fled at that point, which yeah, is were. interesting, because he's kind of like, did he was he involved with the abduction of his own daughter, which doesn't make sense. Yeah, I don't really. I mean, I guess I can kind of understand where he was going from I'm because of what he from, saw. But, but as a viewer, I was like, I mean, come on, dude. It's like, why? Why would you think he would abduct his own daughter like that? I know, and he was going. Yeah, it's not like it's not like he and his wife were divorced or anything, which it happens, happens sometimes. Amber Alert. Yes, but it's like, where, what, where, where? Why would you think that type thing? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, that's all that I have. Um, I'll, I'll mention something in nitpicks. Um, that will probably surprise you a little bit. Yeah. Um, kind of bring us back to. A little bit of a discussion. Um, here are some tidbits. Detect- I mentioned this before. Detective Loki's tattoos, Freemason ring, and facial tics were all Jake Gyllenhaal's idea. Yeah. You know, he Super did a cool. great job on that character. Yeah. All he brought the, him to life. All the, all the, all the facial tics, you know? just I, I loved that yeah. minute detail that made him stand out. Made this role stand out I from know. all his others. Be, yeah, and it, it almost made it feel more genuine to me. Because mm-hmm. I'm like... It almost added to like the he's kind of weird, but he's I don't know. Made him feel grounded and realistic. Exactly, me. exactly. Like, everyone has a little something that they do. Like a little tick, but no one does this enough in movies, I feel like. You know? Bingo. Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bingo. <laughs> Jake Jen Hall and Denis Villeneuve had such a great time doing Enemy from 2013. 
that Villeneuve cast him for the movie without any audition. Enemy was actually um, filmed before Prisoners, but released after. Mm. I don't know why exactly they did. They, they knew Prisoners was uh, that movie. Yeah, get out as soon as possible. Yeah, exactly. He, yeah, he, he was like, he's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this a, a lister. It was, it was too hot to handle. Exactly, which happens. You get lost <laughs> in the sauce. According to screenwriter Aaron Gazakowski. Oh yeah, I, I have this too. About Detective Loki growing up in a boy's home. Oh no, don't hmm. have that. Okay, well, I uh, you go with yours right after. Detective Loki grew up in a boy's home and really di- and didn't really have a family. Which mm. kind of I I can see it. Which kind of played into that yeah, it opening played scene, to like the the prisoners kind of thing. Like they all had like past trauma. That was the next thing that he says. He's a prisoner of his own past with his own demons. The, pr- the prisoner theme uh, is hitting. Strikes again, man, dude. It's, it's so f- it's filled. I love when movies have or films. I'm sorry, people are gonna probably get on to me um, <laughs> when they have so. Some layers that you just don't, you miss unless you actually go into it. Yeah, you gotta, you know. I'm sure, how many movies, like, do that, that we, that have gone unnoticed, you know? It's just, it's insane, you know? But that's why you gotta kind of bring them, which I feel like they sh- could have added more. That's, I, I wrote that down for later. Yeah, like, a little bit more of Loki, because I would like to have seen a little bit more of Loki. I would like to have seen that more of that prisoner aspect of his own exactly. past. Yeah. Um... Yeah. The scene where Hugh Jackman... Uh, no, no, actually, go with yours. Go with yours. About, uh... Yeah, about Aaron the writer. Gizowski. Yeah, Aaron... Well, this Gizowski. is just about the production. Okay. So, yeah. he uh, he wrote a script based on the short story he wrote, which was yes. about a father whose kid was struck by a hit-and-run driver and then puts the guy in a well in his backyard. Hmm. I mean... That sounds good. I would like to see that, yeah. actually. <laughs> uh, I did see where he wrote, he wrote a short story. Yeah, it was inspired by uh, the Telltale Heart from Edgar Allan yeah, Poe. Yeah, Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah, and uh, um, after he wrote this little spec, Christian Bale and Leo DiCaprio oh, both wanted to be in this movie. Yeah. They, bo- they both wanted to be in the movie. Now, I don't know where they would have gone. I-, I don't know what character they would have played. Probably probably like the, pro- the probably the, I mean, yeah. Yeah, that so that's saying, those yeah. were two of the names actually that I was going to. I mean, I'm, I'm saying mention. like either Loki or Keller. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Loki or, Ke- or Keller. Yeah, we'll, well, yeah, we'll get into that I with think uh, Leo recasting. Would have been Loki and Bale would have been Keller. I think I Bale would have done a decent Keller. We'll we'll get into that with recasting, especially. Exactly. Um. Uh. Let's see. The scene where Hugh Jackman attacks Paul Dano's character with a hammer was ar- uh, largely ad libbed. Amazingly. Mm. Dana didn't finch as Jackman was threatening him, which was pretty cool. That yeah. I did notice that. You know, I, I read you, you that before. That was ad- did you did, did you did you know it was ad lib? Could you tell? I read it right before, so I I knew uh, well, before my rewatch. Yeah, I didn't notice that for my first time. No. It, sometimes I would do watch. I'm like, oh, that, that was probably ad lib. That would been cool. That would be cool to go and look. Sometimes I'll go and look, but knowing this, watching, I was like, wow. Uh, Paul Dano really did not flinch until he hit the he put the hammer into the wall right and he kind of like he kind of like, he kind of did that which was believable you know like I thought it was I, I thought it was great yeah that was that that just acting for you right there yeah, and the whole scene where they kind of I think it was the mom Viola yeah she she like she's like my baby daughter can you give her to me we and never he, talked about that scene uncut. We never like, talked about that yeah. scene. Actually, let's talk about that scene real quick, real briefly. That's probably one of my other all-time favorite scenes. Yeah. And what Viola Davis just really tearing it up in that scene. Yeah. Just, you know, like I mentioned, very, very subtle. Like a real mom, real life, very grounded, very real. You know, nothing too flashy. Yeah. But she's just, and then, of course, you see where you can't trust Alex. You know, because yeah, she and he starts him. screaming. He gets the piece of glass. Yeah, he's like cutting himself. He's and, cutting his own tendons. And there's that crazy like f- uh, picture. Mm-hmm. He has the glass in his hand, and you see Keller's hand go right there. Yeah, and it kind of squeezes the glass out. Ah, that's insane. It's it's, it's great. I the love that scene. The cinematography on this film was one of my favorite parts. Roger Deakins. Oh man, he's that's that's our man right there. 
Yeah, it was nominated for the Oscar mm-hmm. for Best Cinematography. Yeah. Unfortunately got snubbed. Uh, it didn't really we get got, all the we Oscars. Got, we got that coming up. Uh, yeah, we, do, we do. I've got a lot yeah. to say about the Oscars of 2014. Yeah, the Oscar, yeah. Um, after Aaron Gozagowski wrote the script, I just froze breezed right through his last name many actors and directors entered the uh, and exited the project as you mentioned earlier christian bale and leonardo dicaprio and directors anton fuqua and brian singer mm. so uh pretty interesting i actually worked with anton fuqua really yeah that was pretty cool um prisoners was nominated okay so here we go into the oscars of 2014 so oscar years 2014. Prisoners was nominated for cinematography. Gravity won. I didn't care for Gravity. Yeah, neither did I. I uh, it was too boring. Yeah. Uh, I I guess I watched it when I was kind of young too. I was I was young in 2014. It came yeah, out. I wasn't very. It was overhyped. Entitled by it. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, drawn in. Oh, yeah. Gravity won seven Oscars. Uh, I just find that yeah. stupid. I feel like the going Oscars down the have list, been going downhill lately. Especially then. Prisoners didn't win any prisoners Oscars. Prisoners didn't win any. I mean, this movie should have won like most of the Oscars. Like yeah. best best uh, best picture role. was uh, Twelve Years a Slave. That, yeah. was, that was a great movie. Yeah, it was. It was. It was good. It was good. I liked it. Um, I don't know. There was there was just so many other good ones too. Um. American Hustle came basically in second. I didn't like American Hustle, actually. Uh, Captain Phillips, Dallas Buyers Club, uh, which won Best Lead. Matthew McConaughey won yeah. for Best Lead. Gravity, Her, Nebraska, Phila- Philomena. I've never seen that one, actually. I don't even know how to pronounce it. And The Wolf of Wall Street. So a bunch of good movies that year, actually. Um, yeah. I don't know. I just I feel like uh, prisoners should have won at least. I one. mean, I think it took best leading actor Hugh Jackman. Yes. I, I mean, I don't see any other actor that year that could have. Leo maybe for Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. Okay. He, I, I can see that argument. That um, none with American Hustle, Twelve Years a Slave. You know, tried twelve. I don't even know. I don't know his pronounced name, but he did great. Yeah. Supporting actress, I think uh, Lupita. Whatever her last name is, one she's the yes she's the supporting actress for Twelve Years a Slave. She was she, the, uh, Lupita. And, I'm not even going. I'm not go for her I'm last not name. Butcher it. Yeah, I, I I can't I can't have that. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we have for the Oscars. I'm excited for, to see what uh, Oscars 2023 brings. Yeah. Um, categories. We start with hit picks. Hit picks. Do you have? Well, yeah. Why don't you start? What do you? Uh, what do you have for hit picks? Yeah, you know, like my positive takeaways were. Yeah, uh, it was really, uh, really symbolic. Symbolic. Mm-hmm. Suspenseful. Yes. Cinematography. Uh, you know, I've kind of gone over a lot of the hit picks because most of the movie, that's like the good stuff, is hit picks for me. Yeah. I don't have many nitpicks. Okay. Now there are a few, but I don't have many. Okay, I'm excited to hear what those few are. Um, hit picks. I just feel like, uh, for me, this movie just feels incredibly raw. Exactly. You know? I love that It just that feels part. raw. Like, it just feels like, you know, it makes you feel like I've already mentioned before, the emotions you're supposed to feel. <laughs> that, <was funny. laughs> that made me laugh. It makes you really feel the intense emotions, leaving you feeling hollow, mm. as in you don't know how to feel. Exactly. Which... It takes it out of you, really. Yeah. It makes you feel emotions and then doesn't. You know, it's weird. I don't know how. And that's what that's what movies are supposed to do. That's that's the thrill of watching movies. Amen. Because some people might be like, "Why are you gonna waste two hours of your time?" Yeah. Watching some movie. Yeah. Because it makes you feel a certain way. Yeah. Even if it's not a good movie, you still can appreciate how it made you feel. You yeah. know, even or yeah. even if it's a movie that you didn't like. Yeah. You still like. Eh, I, I felt the things I was supposed to feel. Cool. You know, like take Big Lebowski for example, like. I mean, you've seen it, right? Yeah. Okay. You you know, the ending, spoiler for Big Lebowski, like, basically goes nowhere. But you appreciate the things that you felt. Like it or hate it. It made you feel good. Um, pulled off a really good twist. I feel like... I, I do love the twists. Yes. But, you know, whenever they're spoiled for you, it almost just takes... This this movie was not spoiled for me at all. You know, I had no, 
I Good. honestly thought the movie was about prisoners, like like in jail. Yeah. And I watched this movie. You I'm like, was, oh my god! Thought it was Shawshank wa- Talk yeah. Part Two. Yeah, I watched it with my dad, and me and him were both shocked. Really? We love. Yeah, we love this movie. I love. I love experiencing stuff like this with other people. Yeah. That sounds like it was good. I yeah. I, I think I watched it by myself well, with my girlfriend for the first time and we were yeah that's right we did watch it yeah and we were both like oh oh my god that's crazy yeah um and then nitpicks which i'm excited to talk about what what are your few nitpicks no you you go first okay i want to hear your okay hot take here hot take be prepared all right cool off if you need to something about holly as the antagonist and this is what i was kind of waiting to have its own kind of discussion so we may be on this on nitpicks for a little bit. I, I know I actually don't have nitpicks a lot. But I, something about she just felt out of place for me for some reason. Like if also if you look up the actor Melissa Leo, I think. Yeah, that's her name. yeah, Melissa Leo. She's a lot better looking, she's a lot prettier. I was like, well, who 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 did she play? Like Oh, Holly? <laughs> you know, I want to say she is like in her fifties or sixties. Not like, you know, the age, it was, you could tell she had a wig on and the way she did, yeah. she she did good playing, portraying someone older than she actually was. But she, uh, I don't know, just something about it. She did good in some spots, but something about her, like I mentioned earlier, the Uncanny Valley, she, for some reason, fell into that. Just something about her just wasn't, it wasn't hitting just right. See, I know where you're coming from, 100%. I can definitely see it, how yeah. a lot of the viewers will relate. But for me, I think the task she was given, she performed perfectly. And, and that's the thing, too. For this movie, something I really did like, you'd expect the ending to be kind of like some guy who's like kind of crazy. Yeah. You never, you really never expect the mom, and it yeah. kind of throws you off. I think Holly is the main antagonist. You know, it did waver at times, mm-hmm. but in total was really good. You know, because you, you kind of see that experience she has handling uh, like situations like whenever she had the gun to Keller. Yeah. You can kind of see how she can handle those situations with, with vigor and she's strong in those situations. Yeah. Something un- kind of unexpected. Yeah. You expect her to kind of waver. She she did good with with parts, but like I said, I just I don't know something about her just didn't hit the same way I was hoping it would. Um, yeah, I see, I see where you're coming from. Um, I don't know, just some I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. I, that's all. That's all I can say to it. Because you can't, yeah. Um, yeah. I will say some things felt a bit excessive, like I mentioned before, the snakes. Um, or you know the, the jumping over the fences. Yeah, and the, uh, kind of. At, at the same you, time, you you can't make a, a cop movie or a chase movie well, without know, a well, chase. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, but I'm just saying, like the extent it went to. Okay. Oh, with him just yeah. With uh, you mean with Loki just breaking into everything? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, stuff like that. And yeah. also, one of my little nitpicks. It's it's not a big one, but a little bit is kind of like the guy sneaking through and in of houses and it. I don't yeah. think his role was explained well enough. I had to kind of dig into it. He would have end. he would have broken his legs jumping out of that window at yeah. the Dovers. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, it's just little stuff like that, you know. And I feel like they would have caught certain things. Uh, oh, I was just thinking about something where I was like, oh, why didn't they catch that? Like, why didn't they? If he, if she, if the uh, Grace Dover called Loki over for, you know, like a possible intruding, you know, why didn't he go and check that before? You know, of course, they had to land on, like, oh, they found the case full of blood and stuff. You know, why didn't he go and observe, like, the boot marks, you know, from the window exactly. before? You know, stuff like that. Yeah. And then, yeah, there were, there were some plot holes, uh, I yeah, feel like. Yeah, some part that we, of the, the Bob Taylor plot was a little bit holy. Yeah. I, and I feel like I don't have enough nitpicks ever, so it was nice to kind of find some. Because there are some, you just know they're there sometimes. But but you, you don't you don't know what to... You like, you know it's there, but you don't know what to put your finger on. Yeah, that, that's exactly. Ex- stole the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah, so at least we both agree on those. Right. Um, let's see. Um, questions needing answers. You want to start? Mm. Oh, no, no, actually, cultural impact is cultural next. Impact. Uh, I think before this movie, there wasn't enough abduction thrillers. 
That's actually what I had. But uh, what about Silence of the Lambs? That's true. Silence of the Lambs, Man on Fire, which I saw a long, long time ago. Yeah. Um, I need to me, go back and, and watch. Me and Brennan watched a little bit of that. Oh, really? Yeah. What would you think? Uh, well, we only watched the first half, but right whenever she got... I, I get that. Yeah. I get that. Yeah, that's where I am. It's kind of like, yeah. I uh, This one movie that I watched a long time... It actually came out the same year. The Call with Halle Berry. Mm. And, um, oh boy. Abigail Breslin, yeah. Mm. That's right. Yeah. That one actually... I remember that movie actually made me like, realize, as a kid, you know, I was uh, the same girl as... uh same age as the girl in the movie, uh, Abigail Breslin, actually, were just close in age huh. at least where um she was abducted and i was like that's right people this is a real thing yeah you this felt is a real yourself life in that yeah film yeah see I, I think i almost find myself a little bit too untouchable like like if someone tries to come up to me I'm, they'll catch these hands i got i got the right hook <laughs> 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 pretty much yeah and like i'm almost untouchable but after watching this movie i mean even keller got abducted at yeah, the end i'm like exactly no one's safe yeah. He was a very, you know, fit, strong survivalist, and he even he got captured. Yeah, he still he still kind of took a little bit of a of a bite. But no, I that's what I think that's why I agree on cultural impact on abduction movies, on kidnapping films. I feel like this is the one that people first think of like, hey, what's your favorite movie where someone gets kidnapped? Bam. Prisoners. Prisoners right there. Right there. And I I don't think prisoners is talked about enough as it should be. Really? I mean Obviously, I with, think a lot of people... Within the film community. Within the maybe. film community. But yeah, definitely not as like, you know, it's n- others. Yeah, it's not like, you know, Pulp Fiction or yeah. any of those, you know, Tarantino. It's, it's, not, it's not to that, that stellarness, I guess. You know, and also when people think of Denis Villeneuve, they think Blade Runner or Dune, I feel like. Yeah, or they don't think of Prisoners. Even it's, Sicario, you know, which I forgot he... Totally forgot he did. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think any viewer that goes and watch Prisoners will think it's a, a great movie. Yeah. But it's just not... It's not discussed. I feel like the reason for that is because um, it's kind of hard to go back in that, like, dark place. You know, because the movie brings you down to, like, a dark place. It's so yeah. good in that yeah. in that aspect. That's one of the reasons I like it so much. But some people are almost uncomfortable going there. Yeah. Some people... I was looking at some nitpicks people had online, and they were saying stuff like... You know, it's uncomfortable to watch, graphic, yeah. violent, which yeah. I really didn't mind. It doesn't it just doesn't appease to the broad to the audience. Broad. You got to be. But if you're in it, you're in it. And this yeah. is like your favorite movie. Yeah, that's One a good take. Favorite, yeah. That's a good take. I love it. Um, I feel like this kind of kicked off Denis Villeneuve's career. Put him uh, on the map. You put him on the map because actually uh, Enemy was the first English movie movie done in English that he filmed. He's, he's, a, he's from Montreal, Canada. I, I uh, saw this. He's a French speaker. Yes, he's French. Um, so this was his first big, big American movie. Or, you know, American movie. Yeah. Even though, even in, though Canada's in, in part. English. Yeah. But in, done in English. So this was his first. But, like, this is what got us as, you know, Americans really, like, oh, this director is, this filmmaker is incredible. You he's know, got he's something. got he's got an eye. Exactly. So I think it kicked off his career because then Enemy came out after this. So, but then this definitely made an impact. Yeah. Um. That's all I have for cultural impact. Do you have any more? Uh. No. I said this. This paved the way for you know some some dark suspense movies. Now, even though they're already out, mm-hmm. but it, it made them like like st- like some new directors be like, I don't really want to dabble in this because. I don't know how the general audience will see it. This was like, this, no, just oh, send, send them out. I can do it. Yeah. I I like that. It's a good take. Yeah. Um, questions needing answers. All right. Well, this is where I want to... We haven't really touched the the real ending, the very end, the uh, last scene yet. And that's true. the question is, did Loki find Keller? That's what I had too. Does he? So what... Uh, you know, I did... not I, I conducted research. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, <laughs> And uh, I found out they shot two different endings. Mm-hmm. That's right. So yeah. they shot this ending, which is seen where he hears the whistle. And that's almost comes back to the beginning. Because remember, they're trying to, she's like, oh, you have trying your whistle. Find- and the little girl's like, no, I, I lost my whistle. 
So that almost opens up a story really. That's like, why okay, the girls they went got back kidnapped to the house and they went to look for the whistle. Exactly. Ties ties everything. Ties together. everything right together. I love that ending, but he blows the whistle, and they film the scene where where um, Jake Gyllenhaal's character, Detective Loki, goes over, unde- like kind of sees him, like and they see each other. It's over. Huh. Yeah. So this but, leaves it more ominous. Yeah, but like, the but the editor or the or the director or whoever was doing that was probably Denny. Yeah, Denny. Denny. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis. <laughs> yeah, well, Denny probably you know. I think it tied in very well with the kind of theme of the movie where it's like I don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah. Because what I related this to in the film was the refrigerator scene, the one you oh, like so yeah. much. Where he's 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 gonna he's gonna go, you know. He's like, ah, I don't think there's anything behind here, but then he gets this little curious thing. You know, you know, he is. He always has like this weird intuition. Yeah, yeah. Which I yeah I I, I think he gets found. I I think he gets. I think found. I like to think. But yeah. you know, there's obviously kind of like a little drawback because he's gonna go to prison. Right. That that was a, something else I was gonna have. You know, does Keller actually get put into prison for? Kidnapping, I, I think he does. Kidnapping I a special needs guy and beating, beating him, him to him a pulp. To a pulp. To a pulp. <laughs> that's that's what I put. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I think he does go to prison. Uh, I don't know how long. I don't know. You know, they may have taken some pity on him, but yeah. that's kind of like a little thing. It's like I wish he didn't have to go to prison. Yeah, because you know it's coming. You know it's coming. Yeah. But um, I don't know. Maybe he gets out on good behavior. He seemed like a well mannered man. <laughs> Why did the uh, Joneses stay in the same town as when they were taking kids in that same town and then letting them go as they got older? Why didn't they move? I don't know. They sh- they could have just stayed in that RV, you know, just traveled around, kidnapping kids, going to other towns. That's I think it's... I think how I would have kidnapped. If I were a kidnapper, that's what I would have done. I would have been on the move, maybe. <laughs> the wink the, om- wink. the ominous wink. <laughs> yeah, but hitting some winks during the. I haven't You'll even see noticed. It on the thing. Oh boy! Oh <laughs> yeah. boy! I'm gonna see that in post production. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like, why did why did they why did they stay in the same town? Okay, well, I think a reason for that is so I've already gone into the book they made about the perfect kidnapping. Mm. It's kind of like the perfect murder. Right. You see those movies. Yeah. But it's that's like right. the perfect kidnapping. So maybe they're they think it's so perfect they're just never gonna get they're caught. They're never gonna get caught. They kind of want to get caught almost. Kind of like they're kind of like there's come a whole catch thing. me, come yeah. find me, catch me if you can. Love that movie. The good movie. I need to go back and watch it. I love yeah. that movie, though. Um, so that was just one question I had, but I don't know. I just would have moved. Um, was Bob... Bob was abducted by Holly. You know? Like, yeah. It, but, it, like, it just wasn't mentioned briefly enough. Because I, I remember asking myself, and then she briefly mentioned it. She's like, I forgot about that boy. Oh, really? Like, how, how, do you, how, do you, how do you forget about him? Well, yeah. I mean, she's abducted, like, you know, probably, like, 20, 30 kids yeah so maybe it flipped her mind but i don't know yeah i don't know it, it was just it was too I forgot about too that. brief but he, no I he didn't forget about her he did not forget he, about no, he her did that's not. the thing yeah he, he was she she's obvious. almost like she's almost like oh yeah i kind of forgot about him he's being tortured to this day mentally yeah by him, prison. his self yeah well that's all i have for questions and eating answers you have any more um I think we encompassed most of the questions. In the so you're saying we move right on to notable, notable acting. acting performances. There's a lot in this movie. I'd say this is arguably my favorite Gyllenhaal performance. I like that. I think this is... It's either this or Nightcrawler, and this is... Yeah. This, I think this is better. I, I, I think so, too. I don't know. I love him in Nightcrawler. I do. I mean, I'm not saying it's it's a bad performance. I'm no, saying it's one of the best not, I've seen, Not at all. This is... But there's something really... just about this character that... Is just stellar, you know. Like this is this is this is his pinnacle no, for I me. I think this is. The, I personally think this is Jackman's best. That was my next thing. Is well, I I actually think uh, this is uh, it's hard because had a lot of good movies. This is my second favorite performance after Logan. Yeah, I I don't know. He just tops it off in Logan. He it just it's perfect. It's perfect. Really? Yeah, because yeah, you mentioned you haven't seen Logan. Yeah, I haven't seen. Not 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 gonna embarrass you here. No no embarrassment. Sorry, film bros. It's okay. Look, just do yourself a favor. Check it out. Uh, you'll see what I mean. I don't know. Just I know it's an MCU movie, 
some. It's the best MCU movie people have said. It's well, it's not even that directly are, MCU. Yeah, too. it's not really. It's kind of like related. But it's a it's a Marvel movie. Yeah. So some people might think, oh, it's cheap, but no, Jackman's I think best. Yeah. This he definitely takes it up a notch. Oh yeah, no, this is a different type <clears throat> of character role he has in this yeah. movie. Hundred percent. Definitely. I mean, and then, of course, I'm not even gonna try with the Prestige. Was good. Yeah, yeah I, lo- I like that movie. Great. I did. But this, this is this is definitely better than the Prestige. Either, either one or two. It's hard to place yeah. exactly, but I think I'd say Logan still. Okay. This made uh, Viola Davis. Viola. Uh, you think probably, this was her best? This this made her one of my all, new all time favorite actresses. Yeah. So uh, she did phenomenal. Um, this got Paul Dano. I feel like as Riddler. I think um, this was one of Paul Dano's best. I don't know. He's had a lot of good he's ones. He's had a though. lot of good ones. I think he's many more to come. But he played this part so well. Yeah. He whenever even if he wasn't in this, whenever I'm thinking of like recastings, which we'll get into in a minute. Yes. I'm thinking like Paul Dano. Paul Dano. Like you, you just can't perfect casting, I think. He he just he just d- killed it. His exactly. everything he does too is very subtle. We he's yeah, a very little scene where normal he, looking yeah, guy. Where he tackles him and like, yeah, they only cried when I left them. Yeah, and he didn't feel over the top. Nah, you know he just did perfect. I loved it. Um, I can't think of anything else. I don't know. I mentioned uh, uh, Marissa, Melissa Leo. Uh, yeah. she she was she was all right. You, you, you know, didn't like her as much as not his... as much for some reason. Uh, we already spent too Wait, much so this, time on that. This brings up a question for me. Okay, so who do you think? Not really actress or actor, but what type of character would you think would be the better kind of antagonist? I don't know. I feel, I guess, touching to recasting, I feel like uh, Meryl Streep would have been oh, an so interesting... Think it, you think it would have been like the same kind of like a woman, kind the mom? Of, you think yeah, it but just... Like the dad or the what or the... Yeah, but like there are some, uh, I don't know, just... I guess another uh, unanswerable question, actually, which ties in, like, what was the thing? Like, she seemed like she lied about. Why'd she have to lie about uh, her husband? Did she know he died? Did she know that the pastor killed him? Like, I don't know. Just there was so much with her that, like, it was just it felt unanswerable. Huh. I don't know. Just something. But, like, she was, you know, Melissa Leo, she did. She did. She worked with what she had. Exactly. I just well, the, what I she guess, was given. Yeah, she she really blossomed that role into a great. I I think a, a great antagonist. I'm, you know, it's not like my favorite antagonist yeah. of all time. I think the twist of Probably, the the mom or the that was mom a great twist. is a good twist. That, I, just, I, I mean, know. that's what uh, one of my be- favorite twists. That and you know, maybe course, maybe Shutter Island is great twist. Maybe workshop the her character a little more for some reason. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Hot take. Hot um, take. I mean. Yeah, if everyone had the same takes, this would be boring. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's about time I had a hot take, a few hot takes. I don't have enough. Um, is that all you have for a noble acting performance? Uh, yeah, that's all I got. You know, there there are a lot of, in this movie. Some, some even movies, the kids, all the kids. Yeah, the kids did great. Yeah, they, you know, they, I was, yeah, I was watching the thing, and you know, Denis was you know very uh, you know he had a, a lot of pressure on the kids, mm-hmm. and they did great. No, he was telling them, you know, you got to cry here and you got to be all this stuff. And, you know, they did it. Yeah. They, they, you know, they're going to be great actors in the future, good ones to look out for. You know, they're, uh, yeah, they're. Let's see. I know, uh, let's see. Aaron Garris. Uh, Anna was played by Aaron Garrismovic. Wow. So watch out, watch out for that in the future. Any future films? Kyla Drew Simmons as Joy. And then uh, Dylan Minnette as Ralph. And oh then, yeah, he's been in a lot of films. Mm-hmm. And then uh, let's see. I think they could have put Ralph in a little bit more. That's a yeah. little little nit, nitpick of mine because I thought he was a great character, and they could, and, you know, kind of incorporate him more in the film. Yeah. Um, and then Zoe Soul as Eliza Birch. Um, she's had a bit of a, definitely a career boost lately. And then um, mm-hmm. Ralph. Uh, uh, I just lost his his name. Yeah, you just, um, you Dylan said, Minnette. Yeah, Dylan Minnette. He's, he, I mean, thirteen reasons why. He's, he's. The, both of the older kids have blown up in recent, in recent years. Yeah, it's, yeah. So they've done good. 
Um, so we've done notable acting performances. Uh, favorite quotes? There's just nothing there's to not stand out. Quotes because I was watching your Pulp Fiction. Yeah, and there's so many full. quotes in Pulp Fiction. So it's full of yeah. This quotes. one, it's like I, okay. What I have is like he's not a person anymore. He stopped being a person. Every kid, my daughter. Yeah. Basically, if you give any line, you know, this happens a lot. If you give a line, it's basically the the execution of the line. It's not the line. It's yeah. the execution. Um, uh, there was one that kind of stood out. Um, You know, when Keller points to the picture, and he's like, you know, it's to remind us in case we start feeling sorry for him. Yeah. I was like, ah, oh, I feel that. Yeah. I'd rather have done that. Yeah, a lot of these lines weren't like funny or. <laughs> yeah. It was kind of like, was got it, you in it. Wasn't reminiscent, you know, I can't even think of the word I was trying to use, but it just didn't catch you, you know? I don't know. It wasn't, there was no, really no lines that really felt like they grabbed me. Exactly, yeah. Um, cinematography. Our boy Roger Deakins. <laughs> Roger Deakins. I think he may be the best. He, he's the best that there is. I mean, you can't beat his format in Blade Runner. Probably the best film movie I've ever yeah. seen. This, this. Okay, so one thing I got in cinematography is the trees. Yes. So you, you mentioned that earlier. Yeah, I mentioned that why earlier. You, I'm why finally you, getting back to it. Yeah, fire away. Something I something I found out was and that lightning. the trees were almost in every scene. And Denny wanted to make the trees almost as like a like a spectator of every a spectator of every crime. They're they're always there and they're always watching. Huh. And you almost wonder, what did the trees see? Damn. Wow. You know huh. what I'm saying? That's Wow, I didn't even think of it. Yeah, like the that. trees are in everything. The trees are always the trees are surrounding this house. It kind of makes me sick to think about for some reason. And you remember the the scene where um yeah, like, kinda, like it feels weird. Uh, like I don't know if I like that, that thought for some reason. That's real eerie. I only, oh, whoa, that's creepy. Man. Yeah, sorry, sorry viewers for that. Yeah, sorry viewers or listeners, especially if you're driving. Yeah, if you pass out. Yeah, that. Did weird things. Look at a tree and just pass out. Yeah, exactly. No, well, yeah. Also, <laughs> whenever the girls run out of the house, guess what? She's surrounded by trees. Uh, There's a road right there. Trees everywhere. The trees are. He runs into the, the trees sticking into the into the RV. You know that man. That's just everything's trees. The opening shot, the very opening shot, is into the woods. Yeah. With the deer, everything. That's insane. There's a lot of there's a lot of great motifs in this film, like the mazes. Yep. Prisoners. Yep. The trees. Everything just plays in really, really well. Yeah. Man, I love it. I was going to list off uh, Roger Deakins, some of his best known. I mean, I love Roger Deakins as a cinematographer. If I were to have a big budget for a film, I would have gotten this guy right here. Yeah, he really escalates your film to the next level. Definitely. Blade Runner 2049, Skyfall 1917. And oh, 1917. No... That was all shot on one camera. Yep. Uh, just one like the like Birdman, just one continuous take. Uh, no Country for Old Men. I love that film. Uh, f- a favorite of mine. Um, Empire of Light. He did last year. Uh, the Goldfinch. Um, Hail Caesar. Sicario. Mm. Unbroken. Um, and this he apparently did Rango. In Time. True Grit. Serious Man. Revolutionary Road. Doubt. Just the list goes on. I mean, the I mean, village. He's great. He, he's, he's what you're gonna look for if you got a if you got a high budget. Like oh, he did a beautiful did. mind. Mm. Whoa, that's one of my all time favorites. Really? Yep. Man, so he just goes way back. Also, the Big Lebowski. So you know, this guy is just your all time favorite, right? Yeah, all time favorite. The calendar right there. <laughs> yeah. No, the viewers can't see it, but he is a. But you're just looking for Roger Deakins' name, right? Behind cinematography or everything. So, uh, cinematography just, you know, it played really well to the storytelling. Mm, yeah. You know, that's just how I felt about it. Yeah, and, you know, I feel like every scene was, even just like the simple scenes, him driving yeah. his truck, and that's still, if it, you know, the, if him going, driving, yeah. and it's raining. Yeah. It almost just makes me feel a certain way. and It's like the cinematography coupled with the, pl- with the plot, mm-hmm. coupled with the acting and the directing and the writing all together. They make me feel a very strong way of like suspense and all this stuff that I really yeah. want to see in a film. And just wide shots, just to capture all the emotion perfectly. Yeah, exactly. Which, uh, speaking of capturing emotion, score and soundtrack. Uh, Johans Johansson, 
Um, he he did Sicario, Theory of Everything, Arrival. He even did White Lotus. Um, just capture the mood. I know. I don't know if you noticed in the opening there really wasn't like a score. I was kind of like as I was rewatching, like that's right. Is, does this movie have yeah. no score? But no, it I know, does. I, I was looking and. You know, on my on my notes, I, I've already told you this, but I said, uh, let Jacob have this one. <laughs> and last night I was trying to look up the score for prisoners and I I mean I could find some stuff, but like there's no like I feel like they're almost the score was almost wasn't neat. It was very yes. In a way. Yeah. You can see I, I could see where if if there was no score, it would have been totally fine. Like castaway. You know, just no mu- no no music until a pivotal point, basically. Yeah, but it definitely fed into the emotion yeah. of the film, and I I thought it was perfect. I thought it was perfect. Um, story rewrites were inserts. Uh, I would have loved to have a nice little backstory of Detective Loki, mm, yeah. given that he had all of his demons and was a prisoner of his past. Yeah, you know, I I just feel like we didn't have enough of a backstory because apparently it was written, you know, you know. That he lived in the boy, in the all little boys, boy home, and had didn't really have a family. I think, honestly, they could have made this either into a longer movie or like a short TV series in a way. Yeah, it could have been because a there's, limited there's series. There's little details that I I almost think that if they added it, it would just bring this movie for a lot of viewers to just the next level. Yeah, I don't feel like it needed to be longer though. Two and a half hours. Yeah, no, it was a long movie. Two and a half hours, and nah. I, maybe I just maybe you know drop some parts and or just you know just simple things like Loki talking. He's like, you know, maybe a little flashback. Yeah, would have been good. Maybe just just uh, I don't know, just something. I feel like Denis could have come up with something. You know, Denis is a great, great yeah, great uh, director. So definitely, or just could have written written something, kept something in. Yeah, you know, one of, something else I got for cinematography is the hospital scene. Where they're rushing yeah. to the hospital, and it's like the blinking, and it's like the flashing. You feel the you feel the anxiety. I I was gonna yeah. I should have I was gonna mention I just forgot the uh, that especially that scene where I was noticing like wow the use of cinematography in this is really captivating. Yeah, no, I I loved it. Um, do you have anything else for story rewrites or inserts? You good? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, sweet. Uh, recasting. We mentioned Christian Bale and Leonardo DiCaprio were rumored. I think Mark Wahlberg was oh, even. Oh yeah, he was in. rumored. Um, I I, uh, I know um, what's his name? Why am I forgetting? Oh, Ryan Gosling. I really, should, Ryan Gosling? He apparently was auditioned at one point. Yeah, no, I think actors really saw how like this role could really like put them on the next level, or just yeah. was going to be a great fit them from the beginning. So right. I think a lot of great actors were trying to hop on this movie at, you know, the first chance that they got. Yeah. Do you feel like they should have been touched, though? Like, I don't know. I, I would have enjoyed seeing what Christian Bale would have done. Yeah, no, he does. He goes all out for his performances. Yeah. But I feel like he would have tried too much to be a little more artistic. What do you mean? Just he would have been trying to... I feel like he would have tried a little too hard to dive into his character. Whereas, I feel like... Hugh Jackman was very surface level. Yeah. Like, you know, he just he's just playing a dad, you know? Right. It's simple. A dad who's going crazy because his daughter has been kidnapped. I mean, understandable. Whereas, whereas Christian Bale, I feel like, would have taken it a step too far. Yeah, I feel like it was a perfect medium. Mm-hmm. The perfect balance. I think Jackman, just the way that he acts, was perfect for this role. Yeah. Because, you know... He was going all out. He was. He he went out. He went out. But, but like not in a way not, that not Christian Bale all out. Like not, Christian Bale would have like love Christian Bale, but he would have gone psychological. Like, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So we're on the same track with that. But also Leo, I just don't see him being a dad. I know. I, I don't mean, see him. Leo a, in any film is great. Yes. But I I just whenever like it said Leo, I'm like I don't really know where they would put him. Maybe he has as to be Loki. The lead guy. Maybe as Loki. That's what I'm thinking because he was a detective in Shudder. Yeah. Shut her on. But he would have done this real interesting, almost cr- weird accent, you know? Yeah. Like, he kind of seems to do in everything where he does some sort of accent. Whereas, I just like how Jake... I'm also I just a big love, I'm a Jillen. big Gyllenhaal guy. Same. I love Gyllenhaal. That's, that's my man crush, if you will. I've always wanted to be Jake Gyllenhaal, you know? <laughs> Close enough with the first name. Yeah. 
In fact, his name <laughs> his his name and uh, his birthday aren't too far from mine. Oh, so wait, so is sweet. his name Jacob Jomino? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, um, Jessica Chastain and Timothy Chalamet, Timothy, Timothy, as uh, Timothy. <laughs> as one of uh, my previous guests. Shout out to Kinley from uh, Dune. Corrected me on. Uh, they were rumored for roles. Jessica Chastain, I feel like would have done good as a wife. They would have had to given her more, more lines, more, more, uh, more verses. More, I feel like more screen because presence, they would have made her as Dover's yeah. wife. Because yes, she's a. Uh, no, she's. She, she. I just feel like she would have just yeah. been the role. I, I see what you're. I see yeah. what you're saying. Okay, well, they would have put Dover's wife. And Dover's wife was kind of a background character it in a good felt, way. Yeah, but they would have given her some more attention, which I, feel I don't like know how I feel about that. Yeah, because she just came off of Zero Dark Thirty, mm. so she's kind of coming down from a good amount of stardom. Um, I, I don't know. Definitely not as Holly. No, know? no, no. But I she doesn't know. have that kind of like demeanor. Yeah, no, she doesn't. But I feel like. Maybe twenty years from now, she would have done good in that role. Yeah, <coughs> but I think yeah. Holly was a good like someone who could have been recasted. I, yeah, I mean, I was fine with who they picked. With, but I think they could have been. Well, I was gonna. I mentioned briefly earlier. I feel like um, I said her name earlier. Who was it? Uh, Margaret Robbie. <laughs> Margot Robbie. Margot Mommy. <laughs> um, nah. No kidding. <laughs> she. I mean, she would have been. Uh, she. Interesting. No, she would have been interesting. Um, Meryl Streep. Oh, you did. You did say Meryl. Meryl Streep. Streep. Either I think Mer- Meryl Streep would have just done good. She would have been. She would have not have overperformed, but she would have made it feel grounded. I don't know. I just feel like Meryl Streep would have done been perfect. You know, something something else I put in here. Um, Cillian Murphy. Ooh. Could have played Bob Taylor. He would have been good. Or that would have been fun to see. Yeah. I, I like that. Yeah. That would have been very fun to see. Uh, do you think Cillian Murphy could have gone somewhere else? Um, He probably could have been a Detective Loki. Yeah, there. I mean, I don't... There wasn't as many, like, roles in this. Like, there were a, a good amount, but there wasn't... Like, in, you know, other movies, there's more available roles. This kind of had... For boys, it had Loki... Which you got to be kind of a certain type of of, of actor. Joe and all plays that perfectly for right. Loki, right? And then you got Keller, yeah. Then you got the then you got the other dad, yeah. Franklin, which uh, that's who Rafe. I was. That's who I was thinking. Franklin, I like Terrence Howard. I don't know some of his. He 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 did well. What about like Denzel in that role? That would have been too much. Yeah, I, too <laughs> much. But uh, you know, Terrence Howard was replaced by. Uh, Don Cheadle mm. as Rhodey. Yeah. <laughs> Got me thinking, Don Cheadle in this role? Maybe, maybe. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Like, that That feels so mean, to, like, Don Cheadle just replacing Terrence Howard, like, in everything, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be so mean. I like Terrence uh, for this role, though, because he was almost kind of like a, like a, he played the, the part of being kind of, like, sad. Like, I don't, like I don't know if compassionate. I can do that and compassionate. Yeah, I I think he played that well. I think he kind of. Yeah. Because a guy like uh, what was his name? Terrence Howard, or yeah. Don Cheadle. Uh, yeah, Don Cheadle. I don't know if he would have played that as well as. Yeah, as I that got me thinking about a part we didn't talk about where his wife Viola Davis, who uh, Nancy Nancy Birch, her whole Nancy her Birch, name, right? The whole time, uh, the part we didn't talk about was when she stopped him from br- breaking up the the prison cell for Alex. She said, no, just let him do what he needs to do. We didn't talk about that. But no, I we thought, didn't. thought that would have been good to talk about and just throw in there for a second. But no, I mean, I think the cast was pretty spot on. I, I do. I, I think, you know, each of those roles had a, I mean, a really great actor behind them. Yeah. I, the only thing is Meryl Streep. I would have liked to have seen her. That's it. I'll just leave it yeah. at that. But no, everyone else did great. Everyone else did great. That's uh, that's all that I have for uh, recasting. Anything else uh, for we close it up here? You know, I I just think this was a really great movie, mm-hmm. and uh, 
you haven't seen it, definitely go and watch it. Please. You will not regret it. Unless you, you know, you're a victim of kidnapping. I don't know if then I want to... maybe don't watch it if you're a victim of kidnapping. We don't want to spark any sort of... PTSD. PTSD, <laughs> some trauma. Yeah, we definitely don't want to. And, you know, all jokes aside. All yeah, that matter. no. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, it's not like we were laughing about it or anything. But just no. want to throw that out there. <laughs> well, now I'm laughing, but not at that. <laughs> <laughs> the I saw you wink that time. <laughs> But no, dude, this has been fun. This was a great episode. I'm so excited. Yeah. Um, You're definitely going to be coming on a lot more. We're going to talk about Blade Runner 2049 with you. You're going to be yeah. on for that episode. Maybe uh, some Chazelles. Some Chazelles. We mentioned Whiplash. I mean, we did Babylon not too long ago. Whiplash should have maybe opened. But, but yeah, maybe a little break from from the Chazelles. Yeah. But, you know, in the future. In the future. In the future. Maybe a, you know, maybe a classic, like, you know, Schindler's List. Ooh, that's a good one. That's going on the list. Yeah. Going like, on the Schindler's List. Yes. We'll do, well, you'll be on indefinitely because you are now a Bowtie lounge, Movie Lounge alumni. So, again, thank you for coming out, David. Yeah. Really appreciate it. David Dickerson, everyone. Um... Uh, hoping to do uh, Predator next next time uh, as my next one with uh, Cody Scott again and who did Jurassic World. Um, but no, thank you all for joining us at the Bowtie Movie Lounge. You can email us at mailbag at bowtiemovielounge.com. Uh, we have a TikTok now just to play little snippets. Uh, follow our Instagram at the Bowtie Movie Lounge um, just, or even Twitter. Again, gotta thank follow, you. follow all of them. Yeah, why not? Well, thanks again, David. Appreciate having you on. Yeah. It's been a major blast. It's so a pleasure. We'll, we will catch you next time. Bowtie Movie Lunch. Adios. Mm-hmm.